If you're the victim of a crime in rural Pakistan, the last people you would get help from are the police. A woman who goes to the police to report a rape is in jeopardy of being raped by the police. So for the truly desperate, the best refuge is often a little town in the southern Punjab, the tiny town of Mirwala, the home of Mukhtar Mai. Several years ago, Mukhtar was sentenced to be gang raped by a tribal council for a supposed crime committed by her brother. Mukhtar was raped, but then something remarkable happened. Mukhtar refused to commit suicide, and instead she prosecuted her attackers. Happily, her story gets better. She used the compensation money, including donations from Times readers, to run schools and an aid organization for Pakistani women. In a land where poor women and girls are victimized equally by pimps and by police, Mukhtar has created a sanctuary. It's a sanctuary for people like Hasina Bibi and her husband Rashid Ahmed. You might think that the worst tragedy that could ever befall a couple would be for their young daughter to be raped and murdered. But that was only the beginning for Hasina and Rashid. Last July, Hasina and Rashid were cutting grass in the fields along with their daughter, Shamshad. Shamshad was only 11 years old, and yet she worked alongside the other laborers. She had never been to school. At one point, Shamshad carried a stack of grass to a pile across the field, and then she disappeared. Villagers found Shamshad's body a few hours later. She had been raped and tortured. There were many bite marks and burns from cigarettes. It didn't take much guesswork to finger the culprits, the grandchildren of the local feudal lord. These children, in their teens and twenties, often harassed girls and women and acted with impunity. The grandchildren, however, claimed that the real people responsible were their own servants, and so the police arrested the servants. How do you know that it wasn't the servants who did it? Because they were there when I was there. But Hasina and Rashid knew that the servants couldn't have raped and killed their daughter because the servants had been working in the field along with Hasina and Rashid. Grass, they were doing also there. I see. My daughter so, so you're sure that it wasn't the servants, and you're pretty sure that it was their bosses. When Hasina and Rashid went to the police, the police told them that they could never accuse anyone in the feudal lord's family of such a crime. So Hasina traveled to the capital of Pakistan to appeal for assistance from the government. But she received no help, and her trip infuriated the feudal lord's family. They beat up Hasina's family members and warned them to be silent, or they would do the same thing to them that they had done to Shamshad. Ms. Hasina told me, everybody says that is just what happens to poor people. <laughs> Their story underscores how to be poor in the developing world often means not only no food, but also no justice. Yet there is one place that Ms. Hasina and her family have been able to find sanctuary, the shelter run by Mukhtar. Mukhtar is now trying to help them find the justice they seek. Everywhere you turn in Mukhtar's compound, you see people who have lived through nightmare after nightmare. Shakira Parveen's family is waiting for her nightmare to end. A few years back, Shakira Parveen's family was happy to see her getting married to a gentle and pious man. The marriage started well, until Shakira discovered that her new husband was running a brothel and selling drugs. How did she find out? He told her to sleep with other men. 
When she refused, he beat her unconscious, broke her bones, and at one point set fire to her clothes. Finally, she broke and assented. Her husband locked her up in a room, and for two years the only people she saw were customers. That kind of neo-slavery is the plight of millions of young people around the world. Lancet, the British medical journal, estimated that around the world, 10 million children under the age of 18 are engaged in prostitution today. A major difference from 19th century slavery is that these victims are typically dead of AIDS by their 20s. Finally, Ms. Parveen was able to escape and return to her family, but the nightmare continued. Her husband wouldn't let her go. He began to torment her family. His gang kidnapped her brother, who was in the fifth grade. The boy said that his hands and feet had been shackled. He had been pimped to customers and raped daily by different men. The gang members explained that they would release the boy if Shakira returned to the brothel. Did you ever wish that Shakira would just go back to Ghulan Farid just so that this kind of thing wouldn't happen to you? After six weeks, the boy escaped when his captors became drunk and left him unshackled. With her brother home, Shakira and her parents went to the police. But instead of finding justice, they found mockery. The gang worked hand and glove with the police. Indeed, the police even arrested Ms. Parveen's father, who was one-legged because of a train accident. Apparently on the gang's orders, the police held him for two weeks, in which time he says he was beaten mercilessly. This nexus of sex trafficking and police corruption is common in developing countries. The problem is typically not so much that laws are inadequate, it is that brothel owners buy the police and the courts. But the saga of Shakira's family arises not only from corruption, but also from poverty. Shakira's mother told me, if I had money, this wouldn't be happening. It's all about money. Mukhtar is constantly pressed to act on stories like Shakira's. Mukhtar has been a fervent campaigner for voiceless women in Pakistan. Mukhtar's home and courtyard are full of women and girls who trickle in each day, shell-shocked by injustice. Mukhtar arranges medical or legal help and does what she can to address their needs. But for Mukhtar, the best way to address the problem is education. Education for boys and especially for girls. Mukhtar's dreams for the girls in her community are being realized. She's now building a new high school for girls. She has also opened an elementary school in a nearby gang-run area that had never had a girls school. Mukhtar is a hero of mine, but her work has earned her many enemies, particularly among the feudal lords. And she's not a favorite of the government of President Pervez Musharraf. The government fears that Mukhtar displays Pakistan's dirty laundry before the world. So the Pakistani authorities are constantly harassing Mukhtar, trying to break her spirit and her organization. I travel to see Farooq Lagari, 
a police official who had been transferred away from Mirwalla because, he and others say, he tried too hard to protect Mukhtar. He said he feared for Mukhtar and her friends, adding that they could be killed by assassins sent by feudal lords or by the Pakistani government itself. So you think it's, it's possible that the government of Pakistan would actually kill these two ladies? True or drama? We cannot ignore such type of possibility, as you can understand. So I have a message for President Musharraf. Don't even think about it. You, uh, you the Start protecting of... Mukhtar instead of yeah. harassing her. That happened on a and if any accident uh, happens to Mukhtar or her friends, you will be held responsible before the world. We are watching. In Pakistan, for the New York Times, I'm Nicholas Kristof.